Bah! What's up, VIPs? Uh, today, I'm gonna be taking you through... This is a 2012 Dodge Charger. It's got the 3.6 V6. I had a fluid leak right there. Coming out right under the fender, onto the ground. I was like, what the hell is that? But it's power steering fluid. Now, I've let the car sit for a couple weeks, and I guess the fluid has drained out. I have zero power steering now. Zero power steering now. Um, so, I'm going to tackle this job and take you all through it. First things first. Remove your wheel cap if you have one. Police edition, baby. Screwdriver, one side, two sides, done. You're gonna need a nice chair to work with. And I've got all the fancy tools and compressors and what have yous, but I'm doing this the old fashioned way for anybody who has to do it the same. This will have to work. I know that it's not really the correct size, but this is a 7 eighths Pittsburgh baby. Live by it, die by it. Get a nice cheater pipe. The car needs to be on the ground for this. Once you're sure that all of your lug nuts have been properly loosened, now we're gonna use our little Pittsburgh Jack, Pittsburgh live by it, die by it, and uh, put it somewhere safe on the car. No, there's no uh, recommendations there, just find something that works for you. Jack it up. Safety first. Once you've got the wheel off, shove it under the car if you're not gonna use a jack stand. Pittsburgh, live by it, die by it. Okay. So now, what we're gonna do, and mind you, if you haven't figured it out, I'm just winging this, because I figure I can probably do it, but. Listen, so we gotta get this fender liner out. What I'm gonna do. All right. Well, that worked. This is the edge of the clip where it meets the clip itself. So, hammer claw. Look at that, comes right out. So I can accurately say use a hammer claw. Not too bad. Okay, so after you get all these little clips out, I took all the ones here on the bottom out. I took the one that goes back here out. I broke that one. And I took out this one that goes up here, broke that one. Then I couldn't figure out how to get this out. So if you look, they have these almost like little, little clips almost. So you have to push. That's how it is, right? So you're yanking on it, won't go anywhere. You just kind of grab it from the bottom, push it in, and then you can pull it out. It releases these little inner clips on the inside. Oh yeah. Let me uh, open this up a bit more. Okay, this is all opened up a bit. I just pushed it back behind the rotor. Now, behind this, I gotta get this out of the way, but this is just a little rubber protector. There's your actual pump, and you can see it's leaking. You can see it's leaking right there. That's where the fluid's coming from, and then it's coming down into the guard here and everything, but. Um, so this is what we're going after, is this pump right here, this, well, this is the pump, we're going after the reservoir. Okay, now obviously we have to take off, uh, actually we really kind of don't have to. Okay, look, let's, 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 this is our new reservoir that I got off of rockauto.com. This was about 60 bucks and it comes with the new seals that are going to stop our leak. 
So as you can see, the reservoir is held on with these four bolts. We'll have to get all four of these bolts off. There's probably a tool or something that, you know, you could hook on your ratchet and use that, but... So this is a set of little hex keys. Size turns out to be 3 sixteenths. Don't know if that's the correct size, but I know it'll work. So we're gonna stick it in there like so. I'm just gonna go around and break these all off. I've got the two easy bolts out here with my small little Allen head and uh, knock those other two off. And once you break them loose with the Allen head, they're loose enough you can get them off by hand. So this is underneath the reservoir I'm laying here. There turns out there's no way, as far as I can see, to get this bolt from that other side. You just have to stick your Allen head right in here here in person you can crane your head correctly and you can see that bolt back there but I would definitely recommend do this bottom one first the top one is easier you can see the top one so you know you don't want all the pressure on this bottom one and that's the one you're trying to get out so get the bottom one out over here in this corner first then get that top one over here which is easy because you can actually see it okay so the bolt is too deep in there to use the short end so I've got the long end in, but now I don't have enough torque to turn it. So my plan, I'm gonna hold it steady with one, use this, hold onto that, clock it. I've got that bottom one out. It's not all the way out, but it's it's already loose, so I'm going to leave it there because I can't really reach it that good. And maybe you should go after the hardest ones first. This top one back here is easiest to get going straight from the back where I've got the short end of the Allen head and I'm using this to crank on it. Got it loose. find that it might have helped to put one back on the easy side just to relieve pressure off of that last one that's left. Look at that. Beautiful. Now I don't know what Crappy freaking butthole designed this, but holy hell. With this reservoir in there, you have virtually zero space to get this pipe off the back. Now, there's the pipe. As you can see, it's short as hell. So you're not taking the other side of this off. You have to get it off from here. And it's got these stupid clips on them. I I hate these. So basically how I had to do this, this is like a little uh, weird vice grip looking thing. Uh, look at that, Pittsburgh, live by it, die by it. Anyways, so after I had the four bolts off, I had the reservoir out here, and I had to wrestle with this for like 30 minutes. So don't think it's gonna be some easy, you know, oh, I'm just gonna, yeah, okay, good luck. But listen, um, with the reservoir here, I really had to jimmy it around, twist it, pull it out, bop it, spin it, suck it, everything I could do. And then once I had enough room, I came in with this thing from the top, like so. And again, this took me a long time. This was a lot of trial and error, so um, I took this thing, I made it down to the right size, tight as hell. Um, again, this is hard, okay? I had to get in here, close this on the real nice and tight it was sitting right about here and then I just yanked on the reservoir with all my might and then you know it came off and I fell backwards but um, you're gonna have to get really creative with this part and I'm going with a regular hose clamp that can be tightened with an 8 or 10 millimeter and a, or a screwdriver I will not be putting that damn thing back on but anyways oh, thank God I'm gonna grab some brake clean I'm gonna spray this down because I've been touching all over it. I've had leaves blow on it. I'm gonna spray the rim around, and this is the seal that we'll be replacing also, but let me go get some brake clean, clean this up a little bit. I'll be back. I'm 
this is what I will be replacing that god awful previous little uh what do you call it? The clamp that was on there before, the banjo, not a banjo, it's not a banjo. Um whatever whatever the hell they call these things, I'm not putting that back. I'm putting one of these back. That way you can stick that in there and reach it nice and easy with your 8 mil or your screwdriver. Um, now there is a little rubber seal that goes here. I just used my fingernail, pulled it out. Um, matter of fact, there it is right there. That's that rubber seal. Now if you look in your bag that comes with your new kit, this one has two seals. I've never done this before. I'm not an expert. But... I just got off the phone with my mechanic friend. He brought up a very good point, folks. There's nothing wrong with the reservoir. This doesn't leak. It's the seal that leaks. So in theory, you don't even need to change the whole thing. And you could have just left the hose on the back and not have to deal with the clamp or nothing. Once you have this four bolts removed and this is movable, that'll give you enough clearance to get the seal off and you can just slap the new one on, button it back up. Unfortunately for me, I've already taken this off. So I'm already in it now. But if you're watching this and you haven't taken this off yet, you don't even have to. So I wouldn't. Damn. Um, shoved my hand back into the weight word, pulled the pipe up, pushed this back at the same time. Remember to put your hose clamp on there first. Once the pipe is kind of on the little, then you can slide your hose clamp back out of the way. And then I'm going to make sure my pipe's pulled more. And then I'm going to tighten the hose clamp. And I've already put my new seal in. It comes with two seals. One's bigger than the other. So you're going to want the smaller of the two. I heard that the bigger one goes inside here internally. I'm not messing with it. Uh, so I just put the small one back on. Again, if your reservoir is not cracked, you don't even have to take it off. I'm already in it though. So, no, you know. Anyways, now I'm going to pull the pipe back. Fish your hand in. Slam and jam. Piece of advice for my VIPs. It seems to be easier to hold reservoir with secondary arm on pipe from underneath. It's always nice to document your repairs. Res and seals replaced 21021. This inevitably will go out again, but when that happens, the next person will get a little kick out of it. They'll be like, oh, somebody just replaced this six months ago. Yeah. I've got my hose in the back. I'm going to use my 8 mil, tighten up my hose clamp, and then I'm throwing the four bolts in. Cut. So I've got all of the bolts in most of the ways. These back ones, I just... Um, used my uh, allen head here the long way and went right through there top and bottom respectively I'm gonna tighten these up and then we're gonna add some fluid little word of advice try to tighten them all you know don't crank this one down all the way while the others are loose because it's it'll cattywamp the reservoir you know so tighten this one a bit go to the other side go to the bottom go over here go all the way around till they're all snug Okay, so I've got all four of my bolts tightened up. I didn't touch any of these electrical things, so leaving all of that alone. I've got the hose in the back tightened up. Uh, you just want to make sure of all these things beforehand. Um, let's see. Now let's get to the fluid. Very important. I called around to various Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram dealerships in my area and got varied answers. Uh, one of the, or actually two of the dealerships, the service department said, you don't need any special fluid, just get power steering fluid, you'll be good. Two more dealerships said, no, regular power steering fluid will damage the system, you need the electronic hydraulic power steering fluid. It's more for high temp, uh, it's got different additives in it to help it, you know, stop to help it not break down as fast 
So, uh, my local Dodge dealership had this for about 40 bucks. This is very important. Your fluid needs to meet MS11655. This is the fluid specification. If the fluid does not have this number on it, it is not the right fluid. Don't listen to anybody who tells you differently. I found this online. It was either Walmart.com or Amazon, one of the two. This was about 20 bucks. So half price from the dealer, but you have to wait to get it shipped. Um, anyways, these power steering pumps cost... I Look, let's just leave it at these power steering pumps cost, okay? Big money. We're talking like a thousand dollars and maybe if you get like a remanufactured one you could get it for five or six hundred dollars but that's just for the pump and if you can't replace it yourself you're paying labor on top of that. Don't risk the pump over some twenty dollar fluid. Get the right stuff. MS11655. This is the part number. This is what I actually looked up. I just went to Google, put 680-884-85AB and Mopar, and this came up. Electric steering pump fluid. Very, very, very important. Look, this fluid is approved for EPS pump systems and meets material specification MS11655. Do not mix power steering fluid types. Severe electrical power steering pump damage may result if a different fluid is used. Do not overfill. Considering the reservoir's relation to this other stuff, it's going to be near impossible to get your whole quart in there to pour it down the fill hole. So this I'm going to call a necessity. A funnel with a little hose attachment made in the USA. Um, I got this from Auto Parts, uh, Advance, O'Reilly, AutoZone. I think this was AutoZone. Pretty sure this was AutoZone. Um, or I don't know. It might have been... Thank you. Doesn't matter. Long story short, might have even been Walmart shit. Absolutely. It's not your fault. Here's what it looks like as a completed apparatus. I'm going to pop that off, shove it in the fill hole. Fluid goes here. So I put the whole 16 ounces right into the reservoir. Before I button this up, I'm going to start the car, move the wheels around a little bit, make sure that we don't have any new leakage, make sure my power steering works and all that. Through your mental checks. You put the reservoir back, you've got the bolts in. If you undid any electrical connections, you put those back. Uh, you've tightened everything as it should be tightened. You put the fluid in, we've got all that done. You've tested the car, you know that the power steering works, you know it doesn't leak, you know you have put your clips back, your bumper's good, everything's ready to go, now we just have to put our tire back. A little trick for getting tires back on. Put the tire on your feet. And then you just use your feet to lift it up. Grab your 7-8 socket, your ratchet. Now I'm using an extension, not totally necessary, maybe help. You want to get them all, you know, kind of finger tight almost, but you know, tighter than finger tight, but finger tight. You kind of want to go on a cross pattern too, just to make sure that they're a little bit tighter before you drop them, you can kind of give them a quick shock. And even though the wheel will spin, you'll still be tight for it. Okay, that's tight enough for our purposes for now. I'm gonna drop the car.
Pittsburgh, live by it, die by it. We need to get our center cap back on. To accomplish that, I'm gonna use this old rag. You could use a t-shirt, washcloth, or if you have a rubber mallet, that would probably be your best bet, but I don't have a rubber mallet, so. We just have to drive this thing back over these lugs. That's about where it's supposed to sit. Kinda wanna make sure that I have it as even as possible. Cover it up with my rag, take your hammer. And that's how you know you're good. It ain't moving anywhere. It's not loose on one side or cattywamped. If you don't have it on all the way, when you put your screwdriver in one side, the whole thing will pop off. So if you can put your screwdriver in one side and it doesn't come off, you're done good. And if you want to be sure, it ain't going anywhere. The rag is just so that you don't dent up your good center cap there. Oh, that's it. You're officially done. Take her for a spin and enjoy.